recently yesterday nobody wanted this guy to come through and especially when you see the way that some of these players have been playing him lately seems like the teams have figured him out but once again when baron leaves the table there are still quite a few other priorities that do come available to them so we'll have to see what snow avalanche does and not want samuel bam can't argue with that samuel's such a dominant player or a hero in this meta Oh yeah, he's so strong, and you do not want that to go to Secret. It's such a flex pick for them. Like, uh, for some teams, maybe Lyra would be a flex pick, but with Secret, we know that's pretty much going to be in the roam position. So you take away that Samuel, Lyra a little more predictable. Yeah, and it allows them to keep from being able to take it and have that kind of secret flex where you don't know if it's going to be a roam or a uh, lane carry. But uh, Kestrel coming through, no surprise there either. Kestrel's still always extremely strong. Really great mid to late game scaling, and it's something people often pick into the Lyra. Do you guys think we're going to see Adagio this match? I mean, it's really fallen by the wayside in North America, but it did see some play in North in uh, Europe yesterday. I don't think there's any reason we have to see Adagio, and uh, we could get through. Nobody bans him or picks him up. You could also pick it up and make it work in your comps right now. I just I think he's actually pretty balanced right now. He's still really strong. I mean, he still definitely has a lot of lane pressure and bully potential, but it does seem like teams are kind of moving away from him as the a number one priority pick, even though nothing really changed dramatically with him. But uh, it seems Baron's kind of more of the focus ban or pick up, and Adagio does slip to the side. Do you see Catherine coming through? So no Catherine end to Kestrel, which I'm sure she's happy about. Of course, the Lance and the Sky coming from Team Secret. So Team Secret are running a comp right now, which is something that I would like highly like to see them run pretty often. We talk about mm -hmm. how well Palmataro does on the Lance. We talk about how well Kavalifar does on the Sky. And of course, Mowgli on the Lyra. These are all really strong comfort picks. I'm telling you, Team Secret is thirsty for revenge here. Snow Avalanche took them down a peg at the Summer Championships. They want to bounce back. Now, this is an interesting pick. Vox is something Avalanche actually plays. Let's find out. We're on to the Halcyon Fold, ladies and gentlemen, for game one of the semifinals between Team Secret and Snow Avalanche. Let's hand it off over to the casters, Sona and Jingyi. Thank you very much, AJ, Humanist, and Fuji, and what a day of vainglory it's going to be. We've got Team Secret versus Snow Avalanche to start us off. And then later on today, we'll be seeing G2 facing up against Gangstar Cerberus. That's going to be a great match as well. And then, of course, third place playoff and the finals to close out the day. Jinyi, I am excited for this matchup already. Just looking at the draft phase, who do you think's won it out? <laughs> this is quite interesting because I'm looking at Snow Avalanche right now and I'm thinking who's going to be going Crystal or going to be seeing a double weapon coming out from Snow Avalanche with the Vox and the Kestrel or going to be actually seeing that Crystal Kestrel. Kent 6 picked up the Crystal bit so far. And it's interesting, Crystal Kestrel is just one of those builds that we just don't see that much. And just because you've got this Palmatory about Mowgli, they can dive straight onto her. And if you can dive straight onto her, she can't use her active camo. And then at that point, she's pretty much gone because there's absolutely no escape from her there. It's the strength of Crystal Kestrel is using that active camo to get such a burst down with your son. Kensuk will get just caught out here slightly. Palma's going to try and steal away this tree so Team Secret will be able to take a little bit of an early advantage in the jungle. However, Bastion's just like, yep, whatever you guys can do, I can do better as he takes the back healer camps away from Team Secret as well. Yep, uh, he's going to be struggling a little bit, so we're going to be seeing Kestrel going down, though. It's it's very all over the map right now. for Voldemar's going to be the first oh. blood, actually. Very all over the map, as you say. Mowgli was able to come up through the lane. Voldemar did not respect the Lyra coming in from behind and is the first person to fall in this matchup. So it looks like we are actually seeing a weapon box, and we don't know about whether or not this is going to be a Crystal Kestrel or a weapon Kestrel just yet. She's not picked up any more items. Oh, so it's going to be a Crystal Kestrel. That's really interesting, actually. Um, I feel I agree with the Weapon Vox. I feel like Weapon Vox definitely works much better against Team Secret's comp than a Crystal Vox would ever do, just because I feel like it does a lot of damage. But I'm still a little bit dubious about this Crystal Kestrel, and it's just about whether how well she can stay away from Palmatora and Mowgli, because if Mowgli uses his Arcane Passage right on top of her, throws in the Bulwark, there is absolutely no escape at that point question really is if they can get that initial stun off as well because as yeah as you say arcane passage into bulwark is great but if palmato is not able to land the impale or land the githian wall if ken six able to put on his tap dancing shoes and just roll his way away from them then he can get a big <laughs> active camo stun off and it's, it's very difficult to do ken six actually been a kestrel player that has invented new builds Literally, he's the only one who builds them. So he, he used to go double Sorrow Blade into Shatterglass as his Kestrel build, which is incredibly odd as well. Um, 
and we've also oh no that was Voldemort so I said Snow Avalanche as a team uh, just have these really odd Kestrel builds and I, I agree with you I don't think the Crystal Power Kestrel is the strongest but it does give you a huge amount of burst if you use it effectively. Yeah, definitely. Oh, Mowgli here. He's going to get all right. Get away. And the thing is with that cast for, for this game anyway, if we are going to be seeing this Crystal Kestrel, is you want to be seeing a lot of priority being placed on Vision by Mowgli. You want to have those flares up. You want to have those sketch up everywhere because can you stick with this active camel? He could probably traverse half the map once he gets to that sh that shower glass. And you, you need to be able to know where can stick is because if you do get stunned on active camel, that's just going to take down half your health regardless. Have a look. Not massive burst onto Palmato there of course not in the position yet where he's got all of that crystal power bash and gets knocked into oh, the wall Palmato no. is caught between three members of snow avalanche here but all of them low on energy low on health for Bashan at least, and Kensick and Voldemort will just take away the tree and the rest of Team Secret are looking for a fight. Here comes Mowgli from the side. Voldemort's not going to connect, but Kensick is caught in the bright bulwark, and this will be the second blood for Team Secret. They managed to take down another member of Snow Avalanche, and it looks like the snowball might be in Team Secret's favor. Yeah, it definitely feels that way right now, and I think this is the problem. So the, the weapon box and the crystal caster, I think, take a little bit longer to scale up. The weapon box does scale up a little bit faster than the crystal box would but either way team secret they do have the early game advantage in terms of the composition and in terms of the scaling that they have and they're definitely taking advantage of it but one thing that worries me right now is that they are just letting members of snow avalanche kind of go into their jungle and they're not really contesting it right now i think we've seen bashan do it and now we're seeing waldemar do the same thing and if you make those leads happen but prevent these counter jungle don't prevent these counter junglings that's kind of negating any good work that you're doing at that point it's one of the things actually we see lower tier teams, and they make the mistake where they, oh good Impale actually onto Bashan here, Team Secret mm -hmm. looking to see if they can shut down that Catherine. Imperial Sigil will speed, pal speed Palmatoa up, he's going to keep chasing her down but Kensick has put that active camo down, Palmatoa will step into it, doesn't get connected on and will be able to get himself away. Bashan losing out to Mowgli and Palmatoa here and Snow Avalanche really losing out to Team Secret across the board. We do see in the lane actually Kavalapar picking up the kill on towards Voldemort in a 1v1. I didn't catch that on my screen because I was paying more attention to the jungles and the roams, but it looks to be just Kavalafar winning out a pure 1v1 and Kensick now oh, the target nice. pale comes down, Kensick's dead as well. Bashan might be able to keep himself alive, but the death from above beautifully placed by Kavalafar. Full barrage is in entirely the wrong direction. Kavalafar, a little bit, a bit of a backwards barrage from him there. Not able to pick up the ace here for Team Secret, but they do get another couple of kills onto Snow Avalanche. Yeah, and I just right now Team Secret just are playing really well and Snow Avalanche, they've got this comp. so. With that Catherine, with this Crystal Caster, you do have the potential to go up into the lane and try and place those ganks there onto Sky. And of course, the only problem with doing that is Sky's mobility. But when you've got the potential to chain with those, the Catherine Merciless Pursuit and then the active camel there on top of it, it's kind of surprising that they've not taken advantage of it a little bit more often. It's, a lot of emphasis has been placed on the jungle so far. Speaking of jungle, let's have a look at the build coming out here from Palmato. He's gone for the tension bow first on the lance. It's something we see all of the time in Europe, but hardly ever see in North America. They tend to go for that double sorrow blade lance build, or at least a single sorrow blade, just for the pure weapon power. Why do you think it's the, the, sort of the European meta to go towards this tension bow rather than sorrow blade? I think for them it's just, it offers a lot of burst, but the problem with buying this tension bow, who's, you know, which is fairly cheap, it does have that nice burst every few seconds, but my issue with it is that the, a lot of teams will take advantage of the old Kentisic. Yeah, great death from above from Kavalafar. Kentisic just about able to get out alive. Impale misses from Palmatoro, and actually the one shot, one kill will connect on towards Palma. Not doing anywhere near as much damage as Kentisic would like just quite yet. Snow Avalanche still on the back foot, but we've seen there, if that Lance isn't able to get a good impale off, if he's not connecting, if Mowgli's not able to jump in and help him out, Waldemar almost gets taken out again. Kavalafar doing a huge amount of work, and Palma will just sneak <laughs> in the side. Just puts a lance into the side of Voldemar and picks up his own kill. Yeah, it's very high risk reward, especially if you go lunge under a turret. You know, you get a turret aggro and you get Snow Avalanche just hitting away at you there. But Kenji's like, I don't know how well you can defend this turret. Maybe we should just back away at that point. He, he does have the slash damage, but realistically, he, he's not going to be able to do too much there. Oh, like that. oh, oh. That was just disgusting. Kensig overstaying and just took a knife to the throat. Taken down or once again, Kavalafar now 4-0-2 on this Sky. We've seen a lot of Sky actually being prioritized by some of the European teams. It seems to be working out incredibly well for them. Sky, always someone who seems to stick in the meta. And Voldemar, that is the sort of thing that Tilt is made of. You know, he picks up the kill, yes, but diving underneath the turret just to get a single kill on a Sky is nowhere near worth it. 
Yeah, definitely not. I mean, his turret is already half health, whereas Team Secret has been un completely untouched right now. And I feel like Snow Avalanche, we're, we're not seeing the synergy that I kind of want to be seeing from them. This is something we commented on yesterday was that, yes, they did just win the championships. You know, they knocked Team Secret off, the throne, off their throne, but we've not been seeing that gameplay that we saw at the championships for these offline matches. Maybe they just don't play as well in those offline matches as they do at live events. Oh, Palmator. It'll be fine. Palmatone knows right. exactly what he's doing here. <laughs> um, actually, interesting, I was watching uh, Mowgli's stream throughout the week. Uh, he was streaming a couple of days, and they were playing with Joker as well. Uh, the Joker, who's the sub for Team Secret, doing a really good job having him in the team as well. So there is a, a depth, perhaps, to the Team Secret lineup that we haven't seen from them before. And I wonder whether that's... Because uh, th the main point of this, what I was about to say, was that Palmatone has really stepped up over the last couple of weeks, I think and has been playing a lot stronger this week than perhaps he did in the live finals. I wonder whether having the Joker there as a sort of impetus for him to have to practice has made this uh, Team Secret lineup a little bit stronger than they were for lives. Yeah, you do have, do have to wonder that, but Alpha, oh wait, he's gonna be all right. Oh, they're diving in. They're gonna go in on towards Bashan and Voldemort. Voldemort takes so much damage from that tension bow. No escape for him at all. Bashan's gonna try and escape with the fountain. If Kvalifar can get a good four barrage down, he will pick up the kill, and that's exactly what happens. Bashan just broken down here by Team Secret. Then nine kills to one up. Another impale onto Kent. It's like, look at the damage! Just wipes the Kestrel off the face of the map. It looked like he popped active camo and went invisible, but actually, he just popped down. Team Secret able to take the kill once again. They'll go to the gold mine, and they are just looking at closing out this game now. I mean, that's, that's absolutely sickening, and that's, I think I'm just going to go back to that Crystal Kestrel. The thing is with the Crystal Kestrel, I think it would really work out, oh, would work out really well if they're against triple range. But when you're playing against Team Seeker, who have a comp where you've got this three potential heroes who could potentially dive in onto that Kestrel, it's not going to work. You know, they can really just dive onto that Kestrel, and we are seeing that happening. And also, you know, Bashan, he's trying his best to get those stuns down, get those blast tremors, but the thing is, Sky's forward barrage is absolutely eating him alive, and we can just see it is absolutely demolishing him at one the bar. Oh dear. Yeah, Voldemort just does not seem to be playing anywhere near as well as he did at lives, you know? We, there were a couple of games in the Evil 8 in summer where he would fall behind early and from then on they just never... Snow Avalanche as a team never seemed to be able to get back into it. They always... they were a very emotional team and they rely very much on not losing out the early game and late game just winning fights because of really good coordination. But when they lose out the early game, they lose it freaking hard. They absolutely get melted away here by Team Secret and I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see, you know, double digit deaths on these Snow Avalanche players. Well, this is definitely going a lot better than the first game yesterday. I think it was 1-1 and 18 minutes. Waldemar! That's just so much damage! That he's Huge taking. amounts of pain being inflicted by Palmatoy and they can't do anything to scathe him in response. You know, even if he misses the Impale, he's happy just to roll forward. There's the death from above going to come down as well. Bashan uses the Fountain. Kentisik is the target for the forward barrage from Kabalapa. Bashan will just be able to escape, get himself back towards the bake. But at the moment, it really looks like Team Secret are toying with their prey, you know. Snow Avalanche, a wounded animal. Team Secret not quite able to complete that killing blow yet. I mean, they are 6k ahead at 11 minutes. That's about 2k a minute that they're just drawing ahead and lead. It's absolutely ridiculous at this point. And it feels that Snow Avalanche, they they have this comp. I think they just got outdrafted, maybe maybe more so by the, the bat paths they're building, especially that Crystal Kestrel. And also part of the fact is, right now, if we're looking at it, they're, they're investing a lot into more damage items. We're not seeing any defense picked up by Waldemar yet. It's just pure, pure damage there. Looking like he's going to be going for that double tyrant. But of course, it's you're not it's not going to work if you don't have the chance to survive even one hit. You know, he's not even dealing any damage back on the Team Secret. It just feels like one impale from Palmator and he is almost dead at that point. There's, there's very little that they can do at this point. I think maybe a little bit more defense, maybe just sit tight until they get to that level 12. But, of course, we don't know if they're going to get to that stage because Team Secret are just so far ahead right now. The only 12 I see in the game at the moment is the 12 kills to one in favor of Team Secret. Kensick. We'll be able to use his active camo to get away from Palmatoro there, but he is at a two-level disadvantage. Kvalifar's just hit 12, whereas Voldemar's still sitting only at level 9. Has finished his first Tyrant's monocle in this Breaking Point double Tyrant's build that we see him go for on the box, but at the moment, it's just too much coming out from Team Secret for them to be able to deal with. Kvalifar hasn't actually built a huge amount of defense, so if you can get a couple of crits onto him, they might be able to take him down, but... Voldemar is just not able to do that at the moment. Death Mobile is going to come down. Lots of damage from the forward barrage as well. Fountain used by Bashan. Snow Avalanche 
do get away from the fight. But that, was, that wasn't really much investment from Team Secret, you know. It was a death from above. Didn't use Arcane Passage. Didn't have Kamatoa jumping into the mix. That will all be back up in about nine seconds. I think just look for the re-engage. I mean, one thing that Snow Avalanche could do is that they do have this double silence comp. The thing is, they're always on the back foot. They never get the chance. Oh, Kentisic! Kentisic has <laughs> just popped off the face of the fold. Snow Avalanche can't do anything into that Palmatoy. He's landing all of these Impales absolutely on the point of his lance. And now Snow Avalanche, two members to three. Do get the Blast Tremor down. Going to look for the engage on towards Kavalafar. Not going to be able to get on towards that back line. Kavalafar trying to get the four barrage to sneak its way around to Voldemar. But Bashan tanks it all up for his lane. Carry Voldemar's gonna get taken so low though. Forward's not gonna connect. Mowgli jumps in with the Arcane Passage. They'll get another kill. Death from above will come down. One shot, one kill, not gonna connect onto anyone. And Mowgli will just use his Arcane Passage to get away. Yeah, but it's, it, we, we did see one Blast Primer coming out there. We didn't see the chain fall up from Voldemar. And the thing is with those fights is just that, bluntly put, the damage coming out from Team Secret is just so far ahead that even one Impale just even one four barrage coming out from Team Secret just absolutely chunks him down. And there's very little that Snow Avalanche can do to try and prevent this. Maybe they could try and chain the silences. Maybe they could try and get that stun down. But they are so far behind right now that even if Bashing goes in with the stun, he is just taken down to less than half health by four barrage. They're, they need to try and even this out. And I think at this point, it's just kind of waiting for Team Secret to make a mistake, try and steal a Kraken off them. And it's just, what, 30? Wait, can't work out. 7k ahead in gold right now. 7,000 gold, that's 500 gold for every minute of the game. Team Secret deciding they don't even really want to go for the gold mine. They're going to go for the kills instead. Voldemar's going to try and get himself away. Death from above does come down, but Pamato is very happy to try and chase this one in. First Impale, really, he's missed this game on a key target there, as Voldemar will get himself away to safety. He uses the wait for it as well to stop the advance of Team Secret. Kraken is about to spawn, though, and I think Team Secret are going to play around it. Yeah, they definitely are, and I've got to say, Waldemar, he's a little bit too far ahead for someone who's lost two of their turrets and being forced back. I was lucky that he got away there using his silence, but of course, by using his silence, doesn't does mean that he can't use it for the next 50 seconds. He shouldn't be looking for any fights at that point then, and this could very well easy, easily be an easy Kraken, and depends if Caster can one-shot, one-kill it from there. Waldemar's going to take a forward barrage to the face. Team Secret don't even really want the Kraken here, they just want the fight. One shot, one kill from Kentisic comes out. Another forward barrage onto Voldemar. Palmatar is looking for that tension bro. Proc has a solo blade in his inventory as well. There's the Blast Tremor. Was dodged out. Going to take a lot of damage on these Snow Avalanche members. Voldemar's dead and Team Secret now looking for the cleanup. They take down two members. Bash in the last man standing and he will get bashed down here by Team Secret. It's going to be an ace for them and they can look towards the base of Snow Avalanche. An easy cleanup there, I would say. It's just a, such an easy cleanup there for Team Secrets. No Avalanche, they knew that they were on the Kraken. Try and came out to try and contest it, but of course, it was a, they were kind of standing in a narrow channel. It was so easy for Cave Alpha just to land the four barrage and force them back. And then it was so easy for the rest of Team Secrets just to switch on them and just turn on them at that point. And because Voldemar and Bashan had taken down, just taken so much damage at that point, it was so easy to clean it up. And I've got to say, I feel like Kensick on that Kestrel, he's missing a lot of those glimmer shots. And it was one shot, one kills. They're not really hitting anyone a lot of the time and especially that crystal castro it does depend a lot about how well you can hit those skill shots it definitely does they just fell behind so early on you know palmatoy was able to run rampant in the snow avalanche jungle perhaps more used to the mountains than the jungle snow avalanche but not able to uh, shut down that lance at all not able to shut down Kavalafar, who is 10 and 1 on this sky as well I I wonder whether it's it's a draft mistake or whether it's just Snow Avalanche really not playing up to their potential. It's something we actually used to see from Snow Tsunami as well. They wouldn't play great in the Evil 8, but then they'd come up in force at LAN. Maybe that's just what Snow Avalanche have adopted from the teaching of Look At Me, that you can play badly when you're playing in the Evil 8 as long as you play well when you get to LAN. I mean, they've still managed to make it to the second day, I think, this week anyway. And oh yeah, it was something that the analysts were saying on the desk. Maybe they are just trying out new things, and they have been experimenting with a lot of weird builds. But I think on paper, this crest, crystal cast we're going to this comp just never looked that good. Oh Waldemar, but I just gotta say, Team Secret is such a commanding game so far from them. Yeah, absolutely dominant by them. They're looking for this second crystal turret. The Kraken will be able to take that one down. Kavalafar just zoning off Bashan and Voldemar by himself. 
Palmer's gonna look for the crystal. Voldemort gets jumped on here. He's gonna see if he can get himself back towards Sanctuary. Cavalafar jumps into the bright bulwark. Kentasik has fallen, and Bashan will try and just juke his way around, but it's not gonna be enough to get away from Palmato, who impales him with the lance. They should be able to take down the crystal here. All three members of Team Secret are still alive, and it's only two members of Snow Avalanche trying to defend it. The crystal is gonna fall. It's gonna be one and oh for Team Secret over Snow Avalanche on day two of week two of the European Evil Eight. Snow Avalanche just absolutely dominating. Uh, sorry, Team Secret <laughs> absolutely dominating Snow Avalanche today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it felt like that from the very, very start. And that's kind of the flaws of the Crystal Kester is that she's very weak, especially in the jungle in the early game. When you have that Lance, when you have that Lyra, it's easy to pin her down and just output a lot of damage and just destroy her. And they kind of did that very, very methodically from the very start. And it also felt like they were also shutting in Waldemar very easily. And Weapon Vox, he's not one that we've seen. disappears seen. when you build the Crystal Path. So yeah, just some weird picks. Vox did not work out. The build path was kind of strange. Kestrel, maybe some experimentation, but just not into the comp that they had to run it into. All right, well, we've got draft number two coming up here. Avalanche now on the blue side, banning away the Lyra. Don't want to deal with Mowgli's Lyra. Apparently, he was 0-0 and 15 last game. Pretty good. Pretty insane score bad, right there. Bad. Maybe Avalanche are feeling like, okay, I remember now why we didn't pick Vox later on in the Summer Championship. I remember how to play this game. Well, <laughs> Team Secret certainly reminded them. It's interesting that Team Secret's banning Baron against Avalanche. The performance that they had with Baron initially last weekend was, I not, uh, pick it. was not very impressive. <laughs> but maybe they um, you know, put in the practice, got a lot better with it over the week, and mm -hmm. uh, Secret understands that. Now the pickup of Samuel to the side of Avalanche, a pretty frequent first pick that we do see. Team Secret gets the Adagio and the Lance, so once again, going back to some pretty strong comfort picks. Team Secret doesn't look like they're into experimenting too much today, at least not in the semifinals, as they uh, look to try to close this game out with some things they're used to running. Fortress. There's, there's a nightmare scenario here where that Lance goes to lane and the Adagio roams, though. Oh, <laughs> don't do it to me, Secret. <laughs> like, Jackson just uh, knows how to get under our skin here, Fuji. Oh, my goodness. I hope not, but, uh, you know, if they do, then you know, maybe it's their chance for redemption. Other way, we do see the Fortress come in on the side of Avalanche with Celeste. Interesting. I do like Fortress <laughs> and Samuel together. I think the amount of pure damage that these two can possibly deliver mm -hmm. with the right third. Right. I don't know if Celeste is the right third in this case. Well, you do. Uh, you can't get a mortal wound here. So maybe you apply that. As far as a dodge, that does help out a little with the healing that's going to be coming through. But as far as having to pick up, but we're not going to let him do any of it because he's biased. All right, let's hop on the Halcyon Fold. Snow Avalanche up against Team Secret. Team Secret one game up. They're looking to go to the finals this weekend with an Ozo pick. Can they do it? Let's find out with Dr. Sona and Jingyi. I'm pretty sure we'll have to give Humanist a break uh, for the next 20 minutes. He's not going to be analyzing the game. He's just going to be sitting in his chair, door on the table, wondering how on earth Snow uh, are going <laughs> to deal with this Ozo pick. <laughs> I really think so, too. I don't think he'll be able to contain his excitement, but it's really interesting. Uh, oh, whoa, Bashan. Bashan takes a huge amount of pain, and Ozo doesn't get first blood. Mowgli got it. Not. My heart is slightly broken. He got the assist. He did. It's true. Um, it's true. So I'm sure humanists will be all right there. But yeah, ba Bashan just taking too much damage there from the minion clear, and well. Mowgli just capitalized on that, and you know, he's, he's going for the more aggressive side of Rome start with the weapon blade there, and we might be seeing a flank here. Waldemar's super far up. That he is once again going to get caught out a little bit. Mowgli has the impale. Here comes Palmer. Good core collapse. Palmer's going to jump on him. He gets and the Mowgli, kill. Mowgli, well, is able to get the assist as Palmer picks up his first kill of the game. Ozo, when it came up in draft, I thought it was a throw in all honesty. Like, a Team Secret picking up the monkey, just trying it out a little bit, maybe seeing what happens, but... At the moment, you know, they're going ape already for this jungle pick. Well, I mean, we've seen so many people troll humanists with, you know, the Ozo pick that I didn't actually think it was going to go through like everyone else. But yeah, Ozo, he does work very well in the right situations. Um, and he does have that ability to dive straight onto Celeste, who will be standing at the very, very back. And that's a lot, you know, Mowgli on that lands, he might be struggling to get onto Waldemar, but not as much on Kentisic and Bashan. That fortress pick. It is interesting to be seeing that that carry fortress. I was kind of wondering if we're going to be seeing that jungle Samuel or the jungle fortress. And oh, Waldemar! Waldemar once again going to get caught out. Will use the boots to get himself away. And Mowgli won't be able to do too much. Palmer didn't actually come up to help out with that gank at the moment, so uh, he wasn't there to take down the Celeste. But at the moment, Team Secret really playing 
off with this composition, you know. I, I wonder about the, the Ozo into the Fortress as well, because with Attack of the Pack, does it mean that you have more options for your Acro Bounce? Does it mean you can bounce around the fray a little bit more? I think so, because it works off Petal's Minions, you can bounce off them, so I'm sure you can work, bounce off the Wolves as well. And actually, the Fortress might work really well at the Attack of the Pack, because Palmatora's Bleed from the... Uh, sorry, not the Bleed. Palmatora gets his healing from every hit of his Acro Bounce, so we'll reduce that a little bit. So if Palmatora does dive in while the Wolves are out, or if he has the Fortress Bleed applied to him, then they could really take advantage of that and just kill him really quickly. But we'll have to see, because this is a Weapon Ozo, and I was actually expecting the Aftershock Ozo, um, and just going for double crystal, but Weapon Ozo, he is quite strong as well, though. Well, Team Secret looking for the key for their new composition, trying to unlock the uh, new meta. Maybe Ozo the Monkey is the tool that they needed to uh, to get this draft rolling for themselves. Already 1-0 up here against Snow Avalanche. Snow Avalanche actually drafted a really strong composition, in my opinion. I don't like Samuel Rome. I don't think it's incredibly powerful oh, you know, it's in certain situations, but uh, yes, we are the same person. Did you not, did you not realize it? Yeah, it's only I because I played that. with a Samuel in a game earlier on who went full weapon power, which made no sense to me. Mowgli will take away the tree here. Kensuke gets caught out once again by Palmato. And it's what it's a team secret special, you know, completely counter jungling all of the time here and not really allowing Snow Avalanche any chance to get anything out of their own jungle. The, the reason they can do this so effectively, picking up the kill there on Voldemar as well, is that Cavalifar never dies to ganks. Like, it's so rare that you actually see Cavalifar get flanked in lane, and it means that the rest of Team Secret can be so aggressive. Impale onto Kentisic, Acura <laughs> bounce in by Palmatoa, but Mowgli will pick up the kill for himself, and Team Secret already 4-0 up. I mean, they're just taking advantage of Snow Avalanche's separation. Uh, so, you know, even when they're chasing up kills, even when it looks like Snow Avalanche are going to be the ones that pick up the kill, they manage to turn it around. Like, in the last one, in the last like, lane gank, where Waldemar went down, you know, they were trying to kill Kevalifar. What actually they didn't realize was that Mowgli and Palmasaur were right behind them. They, the, they saw the impale and then very quickly they went down. And the thing with Snow Avalanche's comp is they're not an early game composition, especially with that fortress there. Fortress really begins to work a lot better once he reaches that level 6 and has the attack of the pack. But until then, he's, he's quite weak um, and doesn't work very well in those 1v1 solo occasions. I think it works much better in those 3v3 team fights. But of course, Team Secret aren't letting them have those fights. Voldemar getting chased into the jungle here. Absolutely getting caught out by Mo uh, by Palmatar. I always keep calling him Mowgli because he's a monkey and the name sounds so similar in my head. Uh, and if you've ever right. met Mowgli, he is a little bit of a monkey, you know? Just like, imagine him uh, dancing around in the jungle, which is exactly what he's doing at the moment. Acro Bounce comes out from Palmatar once again, trying to get on towards Kentisic, bashing the new target for that Ozo. Not going to be able to do too much, but the way that Team Secret play, and especially with this Ozo, I think the name is apt. It's kind of guerrilla warfare, you know? You're just sitting in the enemy jungle the entire time and trying to catch them out as they do try and get down to the shop or get towards their camps. Yeah, sorry, I like the guerrilla warfare. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're completely denying Snow Avalanche as a jungle. And even when we do see Snow Avalanche kind of sneaking down into Team Secret's side, they just really punish them for them. Like, well, that's an easy kill for us, and we're still going to get our jungle. And there's also no way of Voldemar, you know, kind of sneaking past as well, just because Kevalifar has him so pushed up, he has complete vision of where Waldemar is all the time, that they're just very efficiently shutting them down. But, Snow Avalanche, they're still keeping up very closely in gold. You know, it's practically the same, and just 400 at this point just isn't that big a difference. And part of it is because they're still managing to keep their farm. The thing is, though, Team Secret here playing in to Snow Avalanche know that Voldemar does not like to build defensively. So they can be a little bit more aggressive than they usually would. Good call collapse going to start oh, up over here. No. The Acro bounce with Palmatoa is trying to get on towards that Celeste and will take him down underneath the turret. Attack of the pack comes out, but the verse will stop Kensick in his tracks. Team Secret able to get Palmatoa out alive. Yep. And they pick up the kill. They die so hard. You know, just as you were saying that Waldemar, he just doesn't build that much defense. I mean, they just completely capitalize on it. If he had a little bit more defense, maybe Palmatoa diving so hard onto the turret wouldn't have picked up so much there. But there you go, there he was able to do it, and they're now 6 0 up in terms of kills. And I think that could be even more gold going towards them now that they're going to be going for the gold mine. And coming back to my point that I was, I was making before Voldemar got dived underneath the turret, he doesn't tend to go for early defense. So actually, having an Ozo into him, usually when you use Bangarang as Ozo, your whole ability is negate by, negated by a reflex block or by a crucible. 
We know that Voldemort doesn't like building up towards those defensive items. Impale gonna land on him once again, gets knocked back by Mowgli, and he's gonna fall once more. And it actually gives Palmato a longer window for his Bangarang to work out effectively because Voldemort takes so long to build up towards that. Oh, hello, he's got it now, but no one else on his team's got it. Bastion's gonna get Bangarang back into the Impale. The Oblivion comes out by him and actually will put Palmato to sleep. So Bastion will be able to survive, but once again, the combination from Team Secret is just so powerful. I mean, they had to force the fountain out from Bastion at that point just to keep him alive. And that might come out very badly in those team fights. And the thing is with Team Secret, there can't be a lot of crowd control on their side. So you've got the impale that's up very, very frequently. You've got the Verse of Judgment. And presumably we'll be seeing Bashing going for the Crucible to counteract that. And then you've also got this bang around. So there's a lot of things that they need to put a reflex block. And something that we saw yesterday come out from Stone Island, she said they went for those reflex blocks very, very late. And I think going for them a little bit early can change the tide of a game. And maybe they, they kind of want to be going for them a little bit early. You know, Waldemar, he has it now, but Kentisic still doesn't. Which might be bad. Well, it definitely will be bad. I mean, they're already 7-0 <laughs> down. Really in an awful position here, Snow Avalanche. They haven't performed anywhere near the degree that they did at the finals, just uh, EU Live Championships, just a couple of weeks ago. Probably about three weeks now. Pamato is going to spot out Voldemar. Can he get onto him? Three wing circus. Look at the damage! <laughs> Holy oh, moly, he's just going to absolutely melt to him. Smashes down on his face as well. Monkeying around here. Team Secret able to pick up their eighth kill of the game. And I'm sure that Humanist on the Analyst has a massive grin on his face as he sees the work that this Ozo is doing. I bet the first thing he says, if, if Team Secret win this game, which it looks like they will, is to be say, I told you so. Yeah. Well, so Humanist, we're not all Team Secret. We're not all Pamato. We can't all... Dump on the enemy's heads in that way and make them go ba-boom. Even when we're trying to play on that Ozo. I think I've played Ozo like twice in Battle Royales. And the aggro bounce just gets me every time. I always accidentally put myself in an awful position. Palmato not doing that quite yet. Kensick's gonna jump in. Three Wing Circus comes out from Palma. Jumps in with the aggro bounce and takes down the wolf. Palmatoro is the king of the jungle on that Ozo. Bangarang onto Voldemort's gonna knock him back. Mowgli's looking for the chase. Once again, Palma's just doing all the work by himself. Does get the heal in from the Adagio. Will he go down to the turret? One more shot. Won't be enough because of the reflex. And Palma able to get himself out alive. It's zero to 10 in favor of Team Secret. And you have to feel that at the moment, you know, just be merciful to allow Snow Avalanche to get out of this game. Yes, I think they're definitely feeling it. I mean, the, it's kind of like the last game as well. Neither of these games, I mean, they're a little bit embarrassing right now just because, I mean, the first game I would say Snow Avalanche, their comp wasn't that great. And the second game, it's, it's a lot better, but I still have issues with this Rome Samuel. I'm going to have to agree with you on that point. And, you know, the Fortress, I feel like, doesn't work that well with Celeste and the Samuel. And I feel, I feel like, because you touched on this, it's just that Fortress works really well with those heroes that depend a lot on their basic attacks and have fast attack speed just for the way his his kit works, but with Celeste and a Samuel, it just doesn't work as well there. And I think we're kind of seeing that working here. It's definitely working out for Team Secret, and I'm, I'm actually quite happy to see a slight change in the meta as well, you know? Not seeing the same heroes time after time just allows you a little bit of a change, even in like ranked play as well, you know? Solo Q really responds to the way that these higher level players play. And so we'll probably start seeing a little bit of Ozo here and there. There are already sort of the one tricks that you see playing Alpha or CP Black Feather in lane. There are these people who are willing to break the meta slightly, and Team Secret have always been on the forefront of that. I think I, if you were to compare them to a North American team, you'd compare them to TSM, who've always been innovating their drafts and innovating the way they play the game. Solarstorm came out there to try and steal the gold mine away, but won't be able to get it. Maybe he's going to see if he can get up towards Bastion. Palmer's oh, coming Waldemar, in. Voldemar's knocked back into the wall. And now Palmer's going to jump in. But a great core collapse will stop the acro bounce. And Palmer's in an awful position. Bang a rang a mile away, though. And takes it down of Voldemar as he tried to retreat. Double impale. Here comes the burst. Oblivion comes down as well to put Cavalifar to sleep. And Palmer's not quite done yet. Now he's going to fall. Oh, dear. Might have a chimp on his shoulder after that kill. Shouldn't have dived all the way in to the enemy team. Well, Palmatar has been doing a lot of that this game. He's just been diving so hard in the turret. Bashing. Wow, look at the just the pressure coming out from Kivalfar right now. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane indeed. 1 to 11. It's all the ones. But at the moment, all of the game is going in Team Secret's favor. Oh, no. They're 4,000 gold ahead. Kensick's going to try and chase onto Mowgli. Voldemar's still there as well. Not going to be able to connect onto anyone. He has got Broken Myth and Frostburn, so 
starting to get towards that 3-4 item Celeste that we do like to see. Kentasic, however, only has really the Aftershock and a Piercing Shard in his inventory. Nowhere near the position he would like to be on this Fortress. Yeah, definitely not. And, well, to be honest, we're going to be seeing... Oh, wait, Mogler, you're a little bit quiet there. Oh, he doesn't nah. get away. They're not in town chasing these ones. That's a very good decision because Mogler, he's the Rome. He's very tanky. And to be honest, if you chase them right now, they'll probably definitely find themselves in a very awkward position surrounded by Team Secret here. I mean, they've got one kill. And they're only 3k behind. And, you know, there's still definitely a way to come back, especially if that Celeste there on the side. You know, if you can just keep that Celeste safe, you can just allow her to get those Helios down on the Team Secret. I mean, if she gets a chance to rain them down to Cave Alpha, you can definitely do a lot of damage here. But Palmator is such a threat to Waldemar there, just diving straight into the backline every single time. Another Impale on Sebastian, he'll get knocked back, Crucible comes out, Core Collapse not going to connect, here comes Palma oh. though, he's going to join the fray, Agro bounces, bounces straight onto Sebastian's face, Impale comes out, and Kentasig is dead as well, give Palma the triple, he's monkeying around the whole game, no, Kavalafar, you utter mean person, I was going to say something else there, Palma, Palma could have got a triple, <laughs> could have got a solo ace, not enough. The humanist crying at the desk right now. He's got 9 Sad. 1 and 2. 9 1 and 2. That's pretty good. Damn it. Yeah, I mean, it could have been 10 1 and 1. Mm, true. I mean, according to your logic, one one. that's him feeding because he's only got one kill there. But that's, that's such an easy target for Team Secret here. I mean, it's not much. Can you even come back from this at that point? I can't just if he dives on. He does a lot of damage. Mobile's doing a really good job of just pushing them away every single time. And that's kind of the point of how you want that Rome last to be played out. Oh, double impale into double aggro bounce. <laughs> Palma absolutely melts through Voldemort. Bashan there as well. Bang around comes onto Kentisic. Mowgli does have the impale back up and will take the kill with the Githian wall. The ace comes out for Team Secret. They're just monkeying around with it. Yeah, absolutely going bananas in this game. Team Secret got the ace, have that one ace buff minion as well. They're going to look to see if they can take down this turret. The second set of ace buff minions are going to run their way in. And this actually might be a pre-15 minute game coming out from Europe. Pretty sure the whole world has turned what on its head. This? First Ozo's picked. 15 minute game in Europe as well. The burst comes out. Voldemort takes half his HP from it. Palmer's been put to sleep though. The fountain comes out. Palmer's now going to jump onto Voldemort. Picks up one kill. Can he get the ace at the end? Bashing the next target. Palmer's going to see if he can chase on towards him. Does have the bangerang up. Here he goes. He's the rolling thunder to take down the second kill. The crystal will fall. Kent stick the final target here for Palmer He'll get the ace at the end. He'll end the game 11 1 and 4. And Team Secret clean up the semi-final 2 and 0. Oh. That was just a fantastic series coming out from Team Secret in terms of their gameplay, their mechanics. This is, I think, in the, from the last two weeks, this is the most solid that they've looked so far. And just looking at their compositions, looking at the builds right now from Snow Avalanche, I've got...